How's it going, everybody? In this video, I'm going to be giving an update on the whole Black Rifle coffee controversy, specifically based on conversations I actually had with the CEO, Evan Hafer, as well as some additional posts and information that they put out through additional social media posts. So let's talk about this. But real quick, before we get in this video, I want to thank a couple of our sponsors, the first being Thorson Custom. Thorson Customs does so much more than provide California compliant parts and features, but they actually advocate to get rid of those laws that actually make their parts relevant in the state of California. So they're an amazing company. If you'd be interested in looking at their um, parts features, I'll put a link to them down in the details section. And I also want to thank Got Your Six. For just $2.99 a month, you get access to a lot of amazing things on their Second Amendment focused app. This includes things like up to date local, state, and national legislative information. So it's a really neat app. And if you'd be interested in taking a look at them, I'll put a link to them as well down in the details section. So, pretty much for the last week, the Second Amendment gun social media realm has been on fire, and there's been a ton of discussion revolving around Black Rifle Coffee. You guys are probably also familiar. I even put out a video talking about Black Rifle Coffee and if you're interested in taking a look at that video, you can click this right here and it'll take you to that video. And actually, because I put out that video and the discussion that we had on that video, um, the CEO of Black Rifle Coffee reached out to me, Evan Hafer, and I actually got to have quite a few discussions with him about these issues, about a lot of the questions that you guys had and that we saw popping up a lot on social media about his involvement with Democratic parties um, and a lot of those other questions that have been going around. And I actually got to ask him those questions. Now, I hesitated initially to put out this video because in discussions with him, um, it was actually indicated that they would be coming out with statements of their own as well. And so I thought it was more prudent that I actually hold off on making this video, wait for some additional statements to come out from Black Rifle Coffee. And actually we got that today. And actually, if you're looking for that, it came in in a very interesting um, form in, in a way that only Black Rifle Coffee can actually respond to these types of things. And if you're interested in taking a look at that video, I'll put a link to it in the detail section as well, but it came from Jared from Black Rifle Coffee and it's pretty much a skit. And if you're familiar with Black Rifle Coffee, it's nothing surprising to you guys. They do a lot of skits. And so it was in the form of a courtroom, a judge and a prosecutor and defense counsel. And the whole discussion was whether or not Evan Hafer is a secret democratic operative. So first and foremost, I wanna make it clear that although I got to talk with Evan, um, I'm in no way biased and leaning towards them. I'm not affiliated with Black Rifle Coffee in any way. They're not a sponsor. I'm not an affiliate of them. I'm in no way associated with them. Um, simply for whatever reason, Evan decided to reach out to me and I got to have a conversation with him about all of this stuff. So there's a lot to unpack here and there was a lot for me to unpack with the conversation I had with Evan. And actually the first conversation I had with him spanned almost an hour where we talked about a lot of these things. I got to ask him a lot of hard questions that you guys had, that I had. And then I had some subsequent conversations with him as well, some subsequent follow up um, phone calls, text messages, stuff like that. So first and foremost, I think it's important to talk about, um, at least based on what Evan told me, how this all played out from the eyes of Black Rifle Coffee. So what was indicated to me is once Kyle made bail, there was that picture that was taken of him wearing a Black Rifle Coffee shirt. Now, it wasn't given to him by Black Rifle Coffee Company. Um, they didn't sponsor him, and I think they made that very clear later on through their statements. Then what happened is an individual from Blaze Media retweeted that picture and then put a, an affiliate code that he had because he was sponsored from Black Rifle Coffee down in that retweet as well, saying that um, Kyle Rittenhouse is supported by or drinks the best um, coffee in the US, Black Rifle Coffee, and that you can buy Black Rifle Coffee by using the link. So it was an affiliate link that was attached to that retweeted picture of Kyle Rittenhouse wearing that Black Rifle Coffee shirt. And according to Evan, what happened is then very big mainstream um, news articles were starting to get posted. People like NPR picked up the story saying that Black Rifle Coffee sponsors Kyle Rittenhouse. And then pretty much the storm broke out. They started receiving calls from um, Silicon Valley people. They started receiving calls from bankers. They started re um, receiving calls from um, their distributors. And there was a lot of questions about whether or not they sponsored Kyle Rittenhouse. And this was relayed in the video that Jared made saying that a lot of people are failing to recognize that it wasn't pressure from the woke left on Instagram that pretty much forced Black Rifles Coffee's hands and Evan's hands in having to make a statement. Actually, what happened was it was big Silicon Valley banks, distributors who said, hey, you have to come out with a statement or we're going to shut your company down. Um, pretty much as of tomorrow, you're going to have 400 people that are out of employment. And I think this answers another question that a lot of people had about, well, why didn't Black Rifle Coffee just keep their mouth shuts? In talking with Evan, 
it was very clear that that was never an option. If they failed to make a statement or some statement in any way talking about, hey, this wasn't something that came from us. We're not officially sponsoring him. This affiliate link that's attached to it wasn't sponsored from us. It's not a tie to us directly. If they didn't do that, um, their business was pretty much gonna get shut down. So I think that's very important to note as well, at least based on what was indicated to me from Evan is that being silent was never an option. The next thing I wanna address is how this kind of unfolded had to do with what Evan told me about the whole Blaze Media situation. So early on when this was all, all developing, a lot of people were putting out reports that they, that they, Black Rifle Coffee, pulled their sponsorship of Blaze Media based on this whole linking um, to Black Rifle Coffee on this retweeted post. And that's just not factually correct. And I think we've seen that kind of develop as more information came out. What happened is Evan reached out to that individual and said, hey, you have to remove that link. We're not trying to profit off this. You shouldn't be profiting off of this. Um, let's just nip this in the butt and let's get that promo code taken off. And all the information that was going out there saying that Blaze Media actually had their sponsorship canceled by Black Rifle Coffee, that actually all stemmed from what I understand and from talking to Evan, came from uh, the Salt Lake uh, City, Utah Tribune, um, who reached out to the PR agent in Black Rifle Coffee that PR agent said that, hey, we handled it. We told our affiliate to pull their link from that picture. We're pulling the, pic the promo code from that. And then that individual who was writing the article for the Salt Lake City, Utah Tribune pretty much ran with that, wrote a clickbaity um, article saying that Black Rifle Coffee pulled their sponsorship of Blaze Media and this individual, and that started a whole storm in itself. So based on what Evan told me, that's not actually what happened. They simply just told the individual to pull that affiliate code, that promo code. They never canceled the sponsorship. That sponsorship continues with that individual in Blaze Media. That's been a two year long uh, relationship that Evan and Black Rifle Coffee has had with Blaze Media. And so they were never going to, or they never actually did cancel that sponsorship. They simply just told that individual to pull that affiliate code from that picture. Now, the next important thing I think for the sequence of events and based on the last video I made, and that's kind of where we were at in the last video, was the statement that Evan put out. Um, many of you are familiar, there was a statement put out on Black Rifle Coffee's website, as well as Evan made a video on his Instagram, pretty much saying that they weren't sponsoring Kyle, they've never sponsored Kyle, they don't support legal actions like this, they were no way affiliated with Kyle. Now, I think it's very clear in talking with Evan that he agrees that they did not handle that in the best light. And I think that's relayed also in the video that Jared put out in his Instagram page. It's very clear that they agree that they handled that poorly. It was a bad statement. It was a rush statement. And I think a lot of that had to do with some of those external pressures that they were having. Again, not from the woke leftist culture, but from the financial institutions, from the Silicon Valley individuals. It was those pressures that made them have to put out a quick statement. And it just wasn't formulated well. I think they were put in a lose-lose situation really. It was either their company was gonna get shut down or they put out a statement that was gonna upset a lot of people. Now let's get into those very hot topics that have developed since all this broke. And the main things that a lot of people are bringing up are the Democratic donations from Evan, um, two Democratic nominees, as well as the Act Blue, things like that. So these are questions I got to ask Evan directly a few times, and we got to have a long discussion about this. So first and foremost, I want to address the Photoshop thing, because a lot of people saw Evan put out a statement saying all these things were Photoshopped, and then later was saying, well, some of these things are legitimate. And so that's what I asked Evan. I mean, I asked him pretty point blank. I said, you made statements that these things were Photoshopped, um, and then you later said that some things are legitimate. So what's the deal with this? And he said it's a little bit of both because the way that this developed, he was initially getting sent things that were clearly Photoshopped, like showing that he donated to Biden and Obama. And then there were things like Black Lives Matter donations from him. And so there were some things that were clearly Photoshopped and that's what he was reacting to initially. But as far as some of those other things, the Obama donation, the Tulsi Gabbard donation, and the Act Blue donation, he clearly owned up to those, not only in the video that was put out by Jared, but also in his conversation with me. So first, let's talk about the Obama donations. Now, what Evan indicated to me and what the public statements have been now in the video that Jared put out um, indicated that the Obama donation came based on a bet that he had with some individuals he was with when he was working in Mosul, Iraq. And Evan actually indicated to me that he's made multiple comments about this bet in his podcasts. Um, he's talked about this very openly that it was clearly a bet and he was really surprised that this is one of those things that's kind of been blown up because he's made very blatant and obvious statements in the past saying, yeah, I donated to Obama, but it was based on a bet. 
And if you're not familiar with what that all entailed, I guess when he was in Mosul, him and a few other, other individuals had this bet where they were trying to shoot a nine millimeter out to hundred yards. They had three shots and if they missed it, then they would have to do something that the other individuals wanted them to do and it would be something that sucked for that individual. Evan missed his three shots and the thing that his people made him do was to donate to Obama and there's also a picture of him having to wear an Obama like campaign shirt and so these are things that he said he's talked about on podcasts in the past that he's been very open about, that it was clearly a bet. And that's where that whole Obama donation comes from. Whether or not you buy that or you think that, hey, they should have never done that, that's up for you to determine. But that's just based on what Evan told me. And he says that he's been pretty open about that, that whole situation in the past. He's talked about it multiple times on podcasts. The next thing has to do with the Tulsi Gabbard donations. And I wanted to address this because this is a very more recent one. And Evan came out with statements soon after that. And the video from Jared indicated that the donations to Tulsi Gabbard was primarily just a, I guess, pat on the back to Tulsi Gabbard for her taking Clinton to task, um, giving the Clintons a hard time when most Democrats would not do it. Now, he indicated to me on the phone that he knew that Tulsi would never win. Um, he wasn't intending to actually, um, I guess, support her as a candidate. He knew she wouldn't win, but he just supported one that she was a veteran and that she was taking the Clintons to task. And one thing that Evan indicated to me, and I think that is reflected in the video on Instagram as well, very well, is that uh, he is a staunch hater of the Clintons. He does not support the Clintons. And in the video by Jared, and as well as in the comments with Evan, he mentioned that there's a video out there of the Clinton side where he's mocking how all these individuals associated with the Clintons all of a sudden somehow end up dead, sometimes committing weird suicides. And so he has videos out there mocking the Clintons. And so based on what Evan said and based on those additional posts by Jared, it seems like Evan is associating that donation to Tulsi Gabbard all to his disdain for the Clintons. Now, the next thing is the Act Blue donation. I think this is important as well because a lot of people um, I think are saying, okay, I understand maybe that you had a bet to Obama in 2008 and you lost it. Okay, maybe I say that, hey, I understand why you would be donating to Tulsi. She's a veteran and she hates the Clintons. I can understand maybe why you gave her those $500. But then a lot of people are saying, well, he also didn't donated to Act Blue, which is a Democratic um, activist group. And the answer to that, and then also the answer that Evan gave me on the phone, as well as the answer that Jared put out in the uh, Instagram video, has to do with that Act Blue is not an actual donation in itself. Act Blue is simply a processing agent for the donation to Tulsi Gabbard. So really the Tulsi Gabbard and Act Blue donation is all in one. Act Blue is simply like PayPal where it processes the payment and you earmark that the donation to Act Blue is supposed to go to Tulsi Gabbard. So they're one and the same. Um, people who are saying, well, he donated to Tulsi and Act Blue, that's incorrect. It was one donation processed through Act Blue that went to Tulsi Gabbard. So that whole $500 um, that went to Tulsi was processed through Act Blue, and that's where that comes from. Now, again, this is just based on what Evan told me, as well as what um, the Instagram post by Jared says. Um, I'm not familiar with donating to Act Blue or anything, so I don't know if that's accurate or not, but according to what they are saying, that that was all just one process. Now, the last thing I wanna address, which I didn't see pop up as much, but I did see pop up a little bit, had to do with these partners that have been brought into Black Rifle Coffee, and some people are saying that Black Rifle Coffee is democratic because of these new partners they have. And in discussing with Evan, the reason why he brought these partners on and it's like a private equity fund had to do with the fact that banks would no longer loan them money because of what they do, because they sell coffee to veterans. They're related to firearms and the second amendment based on the videos they put out. Banks would no longer loan them money. So they had to bring in a private equity firm that would loan them money. Now, Evan made it very clear to me in my conversation with him that he remains the majority shareholder of the company. He has majority of control and that this private equity company is simply just giving them money when banks would not give them money. So that was his answer to that as well. So if you were asking questions about that or you had concerns about that, that was their answer. Now, like I mentioned, I'll put a link to the Instagram video that was put out by Jared addressing all this stuff. Um, I think they did a very good job addressing it in only a way that Black Rifle Coffee could. Um, but in talking with Evan, I think that they understand very clearly that they stepped in here, that they didn't address the statements very well. 
He made it very clear to me that he is very pro 2A, that the company is very pro 2A. Um, they understand why the statement was not received well. They think that they should have done a better job as well in addressing that, but they were just under some external pressures that made them have to put out a statement sooner rather than later. Now, whether or not you believe him or not, that's for you to decide. Um, I think it was very clear from the conversations I had with Evan that he's not a bad guy. I think that they were just put in a very bad situation where um, they didn't have a whole lot of options. Again, I think the silence option was taken off the board because if they remained silent, their business was going to be completely shut down. Now, again, do I think that their statement was the best statement that they could have put out? Absolutely not. Now, I think with all this, uh, time will tell. Um, I don't think a whole lot of people had issues with questioning whether they were pro 2A or conservative prior to this. I think now a lot of people are going to have a very close eye on what Evan does. Um, what Black Rifle Coffee as a whole does, and I think we're going to have to be very critical of them going forward. And I think, uh, and I don't want to speak for Evan or anybody within Black Rifle Coffee, but I think they understand that, and I think they understand the additional criticism that they've got and the additional uh, eyes that they will have on them now going forward. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below, and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, subscribe, and make sure you hit that notification bell because that helps us spread the news about the Second Amendment. So as always, thanks guys for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and never forget this nation was built by armed scholars, and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.